college students are learning how to collect a soil sample that will be tested for bulk density. The soil sample is collected by driving a hollow cylinder into the ground. Bulk density tells us how compacted particles are in the soil, and that compaction has a significant effect on such things as soil chemistry, water infiltration, and plant growth. Here you see the students cutting off excess soil and plant root. The soil is cut off level with the cylinder. The students must be careful to cut off the soil rather than pressing it into the cylinder. Remember, bulk density is a measurement of soil compaction. So pressing the excess soil into the cylinder would cause our bulk density reading to be slightly higher than it is in the field. Bulk density is an important concept in both soil physics and soil chemistry. So let's review this concept and make sure that you have a good understanding of how to determine the bulk density of a soil. You will remember from high school that the formula for the simple density of a material is mass over volume. The volume of the cylinder is 347.5 cubic centimeters. So we're already halfway there in calculating our bulk density. But when it comes to determining the mass of the sample, bulk density is a little more complicated than the simple density that you're used to working with. In order to understand the difference, let's review a few basic facts about soil. We know that soil is made up of solid particles that have different shapes and sizes. And in between these particles, there is empty space, and that empty space we call pores. So the first thing you need to remember about bulk density is that the volume of the sample includes both the soil particles and the pore space between the soil particles. If the word bulk is a little confusing to you, don't worry about that. Actually, it is a rather odd word to use in this context. Just keep in mind that in soil science, the word means whole, and bulk density means the density of the whole sample, which includes soil particles, plant roots, and the airspace in between them. Another term we could use is soil matrix density. We could say that bulk density is the density of the soil matrix and is representative of the field from which we took the sample. Obviously, the more empty space or pore space that you have in your sample, the less dense the sample will be. And there's another reason why pore spaces are important to the calculation of bulk density. These empty spaces in the soil can be filled either with air or with water. We won't worry about the weight or mass of the air because that's negligible. But the weight or mass of water, as you will remember, is about one gram per cubic centimeter. And that is significant. It definitely will affect our calculation of bulk density. So the water content of the soil is a problem. It can change from day to day and even hour to hour depending on weather conditions and the amount of precipitation. This means that the mass of bulk soil samples taken from the same field could fluctuate significantly from day to day, and therefore our calculation of bulk density would also fluctuate. So it wouldn't tell us very much about the actual characteristics of the soil matrix in the field where we're sampling. So how do we eliminate the random changes in bulk density that are caused by changes in soil moisture content? To answer that question, let's take a closer look at what happens during a rainfall event. During prolonged dry periods, soil moisture is evaporated. Then the pore spaces of the soil become filled with air. This is especially true with the top six inches of soil. Now let's talk about what happens when a storm system moves into the area and there is an extended rainfall. The rainwater moves down through the soil because of gravity and begins to fill the pore space 
pushing out the air. If it rains long enough, all of the pores in the soil will be filled with water. This is referred to as soil saturation or saturated conditions. When the soil is saturated, rainfall can no longer be absorbed and becomes surface water runoff. If it continues to rain, streams will rise and flooding will occur. Now let's conduct a laboratory demonstration that will help us to further understand how water content in a soil sample will affect bulk density. The pebbles in this beaker will represent a bulk soil sample. The pebbles themselves will represent the soil particles and it's easy to see the pore space in between them. The weight of the beaker and the pebbles is 208.2 grams. The weight of the beaker by itself, which is our tear weight, is 51.8 grams. If we subtract that from the weight of the beaker and the pebbles, then we get the weight of the pebbles by themselves, which is 156.4 grams. We would call this the dry weight of our sample because there's no water or moisture content that we have to worry about. All the pore space is filled with air. Now we will simulate a rainfall by pouring water into the pore space of the sample. At the 100 milliliter mark, all of the pore space has been filled with water and our imaginary soil sample is completely saturated. The weight of the pebbles, the water, and the beaker is 248.2 grams. Once again, we will subtract the tear weight of the beaker and we find that the pebbles and the water weigh 196.4 grams. Compare that to our dry weight of the pebbles, which was 156.4 grams. And we see that the water that we poured into the beaker, simulating a rainfall, added 40 grams of weight to our sample. Keep in mind, we are assuming that our laboratory scales are properly calibrated so that weight has the same number as mass. Therefore, adding the water to our sample also increased the mass of the sample by 40 grams. Now let's calculate the bulk density of both our dry sample and our saturated sample. This should help us to understand how moisture content in the pores of the soil can affect our bulk density reading. Here is our formula. Bulk density equals the mass of the sample over the volume of the sample. The volume we already know because we filled the beaker up to the 100 milliliter level. We also know that 100 milliliters is the same volume as 100 cubic centimeters. Density is almost always given in grams per cubic centimeters, so let's use that unit of volume. Now we will plug in our measurements of mass. Our dry weight measurement was 156.4 grams. And the weight of the saturated sample was 196.4 grams. When we do the math, we see that there is a significant difference in our results. And that difference is significant enough to make our bulk density readings virtually worthless. Bulk density is one of the measurements used to identify different types of soils. So we want our calculation of bulk density to be both accurate and standardized. The only way we can achieve this is by getting rid of the moisture content in the sample. But how are we going to do that? Well, what if we simply heat up the sample and evaporate the moisture? then we would always be using the dry weight of the sample as the mass. And in fact, that is exactly what's done to determine bulk density. The samples are placed in an oven with a temperature of about 105 degrees Celsius. The samples will stay in the oven for several hours or even several days if necessary to remove virtually all of the moisture content. So when the samples come out of the oven, and our way to determine mass, we will be measuring their dry weight. 
If all of the samples are dried and the mass then is given to us in dry weight, we can then standardize the results. And the bulk density then will give us important information about the soil matrix from which the samples were taken. Now that we know what bulk density is and how it's determined, let's calculate the bulk density of one of the samples taken by the college students. Let's say that sample 14 is taken out of the oven and weighed, and the weight is 451.75 grams. This would be the sample's dry weight. And we would then plug this number into our formula as the mass of the sample. The result is a bulk density of 1.3 grams per cubic centimeter. We would expect the other samples to have a bulk density close to sample 14. This is because they were all taken close together in the same field, so it is likely that their soil matrix is very similar. And they were all oven dried to remove soil moisture which will give us standardized results.